uh, it's another war blog game. Um, Capture Shusha, 1992. I'm just sort of playing this one um, because I like it. <laughs> what better reason is there? But um, when I first looked at this, I thought, well, load of rubbish. It's just all mountain and all the units are the same. And the only thing I would say is this should be a cliff. You shouldn't be able to get down this way, but it's not in there at the moment, so I'm not going to use it. But I played this, and although it should have air power and possibly artillery, and to be quite honest, it's really not developed. I played it, and, I, uh, and it was really good. So I'm going to play it again. Now, I'm not sure how far I'll be able to get through, because I did actually play it in the sort of thinking sense, which is how it should be played. Um, so, again, I don't really want to sort of spend too much thinking, because I want to get as much done, but initial opening moves, I mean, I think this is an, an obvious one, moving this armour down this road. Open that, that's an unit now. Um, I think when these units move into there, they run out of movement points. We can get this along to there. Um, now I think, I mean, basically, you can only move one unit, one movement through the mountain. So this is going to take a long time to get there. And what makes it interesting, it's quite hard to get, if you're here, it's quite hard to actually get around. It's quite hard to go around this sort of town. You can only move one step at a time. So whoever's in there defending can always basically counter whatever you're doing on the outside. Now these units will start to entrench pretty soon. So you've really got to get these units in as quick as possible. Um, so I'm going to, I'm, I'm not going to sort of spend too, as much time as thinking as I'd, I'd like, but I think, I think part and parcel of playing these games is, is sort of considering the opening moves again and again. I know it's not that exciting, this is a um, command operations, I'm just looking at that game and that looks pretty exciting, but, um, but anyway, I'm going to move my silly little counters, so I'm going to go and attack, I need some sound effects, no, I'm not going to do sound effects, defend and retreat, two to one odds, so I won on that, which is good for me, and it's good for me because, although I'm not really trying to play Armenian forces, I feel as though I am playing the Armenian forces, I'm playing both sides. Um, because I'm not fatigued on that, but this has given that unit a fatigue of two. Now, you really need to everything to go as, as well as possible in the early stages. I think in the early stages you've got to actually try and get one or two of these little internal hexes. Um, it's easier said than done. Right, so I don't think I have much choice other than with this one to move there. Um, um, um. Now, the thing is, I'm not convinced that I want to attack that unit because he's in mountains, he'll be worth two. Although, yeah, one thing I did remember about this game was that you end up doing a lot of attacks at one to one or worse. So I think what I'm going to do, one, two, three, I'm going to go for that attack. Now this will probably be a one to two. Now let's see what it actually ends up as. One to one and I've got an exchange. Now that could have gone in my favour. The point I was making there is a lot of the battles in this one, and I think this is what makes this a little different, is that you are actually fighting a lot of one to ones. But the thing with the one to ones, let's just move these in here. Has he got any movement? No, he's, he's, he doesn't have any movement. Some of these units are like that on the first turn. Let's find out why. Yeah, so, so basically there's a lot of one-to-one -one assaults going on, or, or even worse, but you only have to win them sort of once. You know, I mean, if I had... Well, you'll see in a bit. Yeah, so... 
So, I mean, it's taken me five minutes to get through the first turn there, so it's not brilliant. And that's that. So, really, I mean, what I'm sort of communicating to some extent is this is the first turn. I mean, and I'm not asking you, it's a hypothetical question, but how would you do the first turn? And that's sort of the nature of this game, I think. It's sort of like, well, what are the options? And when you start to think about it, you sort of think, well, you know, could I have attacked there? I mean, what would have been the best result? I think trying to get the fatigues in there, um, et cetera, et cetera. But I mean, you know, there's not a lot. I don't think there are any other ways to play that opening move. Now, I think when it comes down to playing the uh, Azerbaijanians, that's how you say it, the um, I don't think I could have attacked that. I think the thing that they want to do, now he had to retreat into there, which was not good for him. Um, I think he wants to move there, because he can only move one hex, and that blocks the road. Now I think I might actually just leave him in there because then that blocks the road still and I am actually going to mount him. So it's probably okay to stay there and you know what I think I might actually stay there as well because that creates a zone of control. So, so there was only one movement in that whole move. I'm not sure whether that was the best thing to do. So back onto the uh, Armenia, where this way you, you're doing the, the sort of offensive thinking. Um, now he's already fatigued too. Now this is where I think actually, because I'm trying to play it fast, I should have moved him into there because I think I'm going to try and get this hex. That was a sort of mistake, not putting something into there. Because I'm pretty sure that I'm going to get some okay odds on this. Two to one exchange. Now that was not good. So this is where it, this is, I think, the crunch. If that had gone well, it would have been fantastic. It's not. And now they're all fatigued, and they're like, you know, that could, that single battle there could have made, you know, all the difference in this game. Um, I don't know, but let's move this tank. Too late. Oh well. Let's see. Two to one exchange. See, these two to ones, they'd be really nice if they were victories, and that's two losses. They, they could have been two wins. So. You know, it's not going very well for the Armenians. And when I played it before, it actually went a lot better. And you can only move one. See, keeping that unit there was sort of a good move because now it forces me to go through there. Now I should get some good odds on this. Four to one exchange. Now, I mean, this is it's going about as bad as it could. Um, it didn't go this badly before. I mean, on the first on the first turn, I think this, the first two turns you're looking to get something into this town, um, and I think that's pretty much it. I'm used to those and that, that, that. So I'm going to skip through to the next turn. Uh, it really is in the as of Johnny's favour now, I think. Uh, and you know, this is what I like about these little games. They don't take long, and you can already sort of you know, start to sort of see a, you know, you see, I don't know, see some results, so, so to speak. Now, I am actually going to reinforce that hex. I'm going to leave that there. Now, he is going to now move into there. And I think, I think that it's now time to save him. And that's that. So, okay, that might not have been the best move. Now they're all the thing. Now they're all dug in. 
other than the two that I moved. Now I can never, I, I don't really have a clear way of finding out which one of these did and isn't dug in, but I'm just not going to move them. Now I'm getting pretty desperate here. So, I'm going to essentially, this is why I've sort of, well, this is not why I'm doubled up there, but being doubled up there is a good thing. I think I can move there. But I'm guessing I can't because arm I can't move into Mount Texas. Come on. So I got one to one odds. This is where I was saying before. I got one to one odds, and this time I got a defender retreat. So it's, it's about playing those one to one odds. And now I've got that hex there. Um, in here, uh, there's two units. That's two in dense urban, which is going to make them six times 1.5, which is going to make them nine. And I've only got four, so I'm not going to do that attack. But what I think I will do here. Let's move there. Although I should have some movement. Oh no, because I've just moved into a zone of control. Or did I? Yeah, I just moved into that zone of control, so I can't move. Yeah, that, that's right. So I've got a minus five. That makes sense. Okay, and I'm going to try this assault. Again. Now I think, although it, it's, the odds are worse for me now because they're dug in and there's more than one, I think it's still going to be hmm, like that. I wonder why. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, that was. Suspicious. Now I've got a one to one odds there again. Now that could have been in my favour. So it's getting towards the 15 minutes now. I think what I'm sort of trying to demonstrate here is that this is a sort of a this is a sort of game where you've got to play the one to one odds um, in order to you know in, in order to sort of advance. And it's in playing those one-to-one -one odds. If you have two one-to-one -one odds, one will win, one won't. Now they could have all gone in my favour earlier on. Um, a few minutes left, so I'm going to speed things up. I'm going to leave these up here. I mean, basically, I think the strategy for Agile Design is, is to remain dug in. They only get better. It's a case of which ones you know, do I really want now. This one is actually quite well defended. I think the, the armor will come through there next turn. But there isn't really anything. I mean, if I move from there to there, then, that gives, then they're going to attack on there. So I'm going to leave them where they are. Plus, that'll give me one more round for a couple more attacks. Um, so, again, I've got that attack into there. Now, they're actually fatigued to one, and I'm fatigued to two. So, Shall I try and take out the centre there? Why not? Why not go for a big blast in the last moment? Yes. Now that was two to one. I got defender retreat, so that 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 was kind of good. Um, now the thing is, this it's not over yet. It, it's sort of it, it, it goes swings and roundabouts, and the Azerbaijanis can actually counter attack. Now, they don't necessarily want to because they'd lose their defences and, and, and entrenchments, but it's, it's, it's not easy taking this out. Um, I, I played it before and it was, it, was, it was actually quite interesting. I'm not going to make any more moves other than maybe just take this just to see whether that. Exchange now another exchange. I mean, it, it's sort of such a simple little, little, little game, and but it is, it is actually quite satisfying. So that's the um, 
whatever that game is. Right, welcome to the second part of the war blog game of whatever this is. Um, essentially, the blue people are attacking the green ones in this town. And um, what, I, what I'm trying to demonstrate here is the, the sort of dynamic ebb and flow of this type of battle. And this is quite tightly knit. Now, what's happened is the Armenian units have just broken into the, um, the, the town through this light urban hex here. And they did quite a, a successful atol assault right into the middle. Now, I didn't want to leave it at that. Um, although this makes it now two videos, because this isn't actually the end of it, this is actually just the start of it. Um, now, these people are still in reasonable order, and they stay where they are initially, but once they're actually being displaced, they can start moving, and whatever happens, there's always something that these um, green units can actually do. Now, Whilst I was waiting for that video to sort of finish processing and uploading, I was sort of looking at this and I thought, hang on, this is actually going <laughs> to be quite tasty because if you look at there, there's, I think there's one, two, one, two, three, I can't see how many units there are, one, two, three, I think there are five units in that stack, which makes that ten tripled into a third into a, a dense urban it makes that thirty. But they've got a few fatigues, but let's just say they're thirty. Got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now that would give me if I had ten. So for example if I do actually move him into there. Oh no I can't it's still the Armenian turn. Hang on. Hang on. That shouldn't happen. What happened there? Oh! No, that shouldn't happen. No, no, I don't. Yeah, it's, um, don't worry about that. Um, yeah, he's moved. I haven't going to do anything more with him. I could. Hmm. It's still the Armenian turns. Now they're what they're anticipating is what I was thinking. That they are going to now try the green units are probably going to try and move into there and then do a full attack on there at maybe one to two, one to one odds. And if they win and get a retreat this whole stack will be eliminated. So in theory, this was a mistake. However, if I can force this armour now into there, I can break up that, that flank. So let me try that. I don't have any other units to join in the assault. So let's see. That was an exchange, so I failed at one to two, but it, I think it was worth a go. <coughs> so I think that's pretty much all the Armenians moved. Yeah, they've all moved. There's him. Now one of the things I was trying to explain before, you can't move quickly around here. Now I think I'm going to try and move in this way at least to try and start joining up with these units. So now it's the Azerbaijan turn. And I'm going to try this. So we've got, well let's move him into there. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 units going against 30 so that's basically 1 to 3 but because I've got a full flank I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 I've got another 50% on top of that 
So basically, I'm at pretty much 15 units. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 times 1.5 puts me up to 15, about 16. I can't put any rubbish on these odds, but some of them are, are, are fatigued. So are some of these. I mean, it's a crap shot, but I'm going to go for it. Look at that. I've never been in this situation before, but if this wins, I'm just going to sort of go back because I just want to sort of contemplate. Now, what's happened there? The unit seems to have moved back. So, what I'm going to do there, because I think that's an error, I'm going to reload. And, yeah. So, it's sort of, if something like that happens, you just reload the page. And because it's a browser game, these things are going to happen. But what I'm sort of thinking is that Abhijitana move, uh, that, that Armenian move, which came from there, if you saw the first video, was a mistake. I mean, to put them in the position where they could be lose the whole stack, because if this, if this battle wins, then the Azerbaijanans pretty much stand a, a good chance of actually um, coming out on top on this. So, I mean, it's a crap shot, but I think, you know, the sort of... The fact that whoever moved these units into the centre of that town, I mean, they, they should be fired, or I'll shot, or whatever you do to people who make stupid military decisions. I mean, that was not a good move. Because now it's put them in this position, and the attack exchange. Well, that could have been more, that could have been better. So that's that. Now, now that we know all fatigued, so these. I mean, that could have gone. That could. That's one. Of, that's that's the nature of wargaming. That's what I like about the human game. You get something. I mean, it's quite ridiculous. But the thing is, it's not that ridiculous, really. You know, it's slightly ridiculous, but. You know, anyway, they've all lost their entrenchments because they engaged in that. It was a crap shot, but so now it's the Armenians' turn. Now, what can the Armenians do? Now, I think as the Armenians really want to be trying to destroy as many units as possible, and I really don't know how to do that. Now, I'm thinking I might do some little attacks, split this stack up to attack that, that, and that. We'll really try and go for a 7 to 1. I've got 7 minutes left. Um, I think what I'm going to do is he's got 2 units in there. In the dense urban, puts that up to 6. But they've got some fatigues. 1 and 2, just not, not much, but I'd have 1, 2, 3, I'd have 30% more, so he's 2, 4, 6, that's 1 to 1, I mean I could get this up to 2 to 1, so that's 4, that's 6, that's 8, 4 more units, 2 of these, that should put me up to about 2 to 1. Let's see, I'm going to put another one in there. 2 to 1, exchange, that wasn't good. Let's see, uh, yeah. and I'm going to move him to there and try this attack. Now, exchange. This is what I was trying to convey about this game. There's, there's a lot happening here, and it is a town, and this, this sort of represents, you know, this, this, the action's quite tight. It's not a sort of a game where you can just completely trunch the other units. They are quite resilient, but they are getting fatigued. I mean, that has four fatigues. The one below it has five fatigues. You know, it's 50%. So, you know, the, the, these are getting exhausted, but Ironically, so are the Armenians. They're at four fatigue. The unit below are at four fatigue. So it's sort of they, they both go at the same time. But sooner or later, some of these units will start to get eliminated. Um, I don't think I have any more units to attack. Um, time is moving on. So again. Ouch. Now what I should have done, again, stupid Armenian player, 
stupid. <laughs> not being a player. I should have just concentrate. Instead of splitting this into two, I should have concentrated on not being in this stupid trap. Because now, they are just going to go for it. Again. I mean, this is another crap shot. I mean, I can't believe that I did that. Okay. Attack. Attacker retreat. Oh, one to one. Attacker retreat. Now that was not good. Um, there are some things of the retreat. They always seem to retreat south. I will be replacing the retreat rules so that it will calculate all the available retreats and then choose one randomly. Um, but at least they're not retreating into enemy hexes, which is um, at least the start. That was. I would have been quite nice if it done that, just, just for this being a video, but um, anyway. So now it's the Armenians' turn. So the Armenians, what can they do? Well, I think... Hmm, I don't know. I think I'm going to... Because I'm because I'm trying to do things quickly, I'm not really thinking very fast. Um, I think I'm going to attack into this hex with everything from here. Now I'm not really calculating the odds. I just really try and think of ebb and flow. Um, two to one exchange. I mean that was just everything is just so tight. Okay, that wasn't good. Now, this is going to be super tight. I've done that a few times, I don't know why. It doesn't like that. One to one and exchange. Okay. Now, I think what I'm going to try and do here is I want to take this unit out. So he's worth one urban double to two. So I can send in one, two, three. We get three to one on that. In theory, four to one exchange. That was not good. Four to one. So anyway, I want to at least what I'm trying to do is find the one that's um, got some movements. At least break up that flank. So, see, the game is still afoot for both sides, and I'm not going to do this a third time, but it's, it's just, it's more intriguing when you've got the time to actually think about what you're going to do. Uh, but now it's the Armenian, it's the Azerbaijan turn, and obviously a lot of these units are sort of getting fatigued, so are the enemy, and that's the sort of the difference. And I think the thing to do is to move, is to just play defensively again. Trying to find one of these ones in this stack that has some movement. So I've only got a minute left. Yeah, I think that looks sort of good. I don't want to do any attacks. So it's now down to the Armenians' turn. Now, see, the Armenians don't really have. I'm going to put everything, I think, into this stack. Everything. It's the last minute. I'm not calculating the odds. Three to one exchange. I just I, I think this it's, it's just sort of interesting how you you know you can read so much into such a small sort of amount of nothingness. Uh, I'm not going to do any more moves because there are sort of rush things. I mean I might continue to play this after the video. Um, one thing I will be ha having, I think this this campaign it needs a road into the city, um, and the um, 
Azerbaijanis do get some air force, and I think both sides need some artillery. So this will probably change over time. Um, have a go. See how you do. Welcome to part three of um, War Blog. The um, third part of this city assault, um, Armenia and someone else. I'm I just thinking, if you've been watching this, this has been 45 minutes of your life, and you won't get back. And I'm just wondering whether or not this is better than watching someone play Minesweeper or not. Anyway, I'm going to continue, assuming that it is better than watching someone play Minesweeper. And I think the thing to sort of demonstrate here is how fatigued all of the units are. Now this unit down here only has one fatigue. Um, but just about everything else is fatigued to the gills. Now, even the green ones, the Azerbaijanis, are not as fatigued as the Armenians, but they are still pretty much fatigued. So it can still go both ways, which I find intriguing. And, you know, it's something that I really do, I really do like about the way all of this works. Now, I think the Armenians have. I think they've moved. Yeah, everything's moved. <coughs> yeah. Mm, I can get some attack into there. So we've got one, two, three, nine. And I've got six, seven, eight. One, two. I think I'm just going to give it a Whirl or not? I think I'm going to preserve myself. I really don't want to sort of try something that I'm definitely going to lose. I'd rather he attack me. So I'm going to end that turn. Okay, so now it's the Azerbaijan turn. And again, they're sort of thinking the same thing. Now, they've got a fairly strong hold in here. And now this hex could be taken out. This hex could also be assaulted. I think they're going to stay where they are. And now they are dug in, see? So they're actually just giving themselves 50% more defence, which is a problem for the Armenians now. But I think the Armenians have got to stop splitting their attacks and put everything into this hex here and I'm going to do that because the Armenians can't really afford to spend much more time messing about because the Azerbaijans are not going to be able to attack no matter how many city spaces I leave open good two to one that was what I needed a bit of success now that has really changed the map I've taken that place um, now obviously the centre of the town is open, but I can easily fill that. Now the question is, what are the odds here? Now I don't think I'm going to push that to be quite honest, but I'm going to move these units. Now I've gone into through a zone of control. I don't know how the zones of control work. That's interesting. So that's that. Look how dynamically it's changed already. It's now, you know, there's almost two front lines. You know, can the Azerbaijanis hold out? Um, now, I mean, they're getting quite excited, these Azerbaijanis, because they can almost take this centre out. But I think the thing is, they don't want to be taking anything out unless, what's the fatigues? So they've only got three fatigues. So they're worth six in there. And they can get one, two, three. Four, five, six. Hmm. I think they're going to not do anything. Okay, so the Armenians are thinking, well, they're not doing anything. The thing to do is to at least bolster this one up. So move some units into there to give that at least a reasonable stack. One unit. Not so much here, but he won't get there, that was a bit of a silly thing to do. Going 
to go next. Ouch. One to one. Attacker retreat. That was interesting because I think these are the units that retreated into there and these units retreated into there. That is interesting. Um, and this unit retreated down here. But the fatigues must be phenomenal now on both sides. Well, this unit's only got one fatigue. Um, I wonder where the other ones went. I don't understand what happened there. Maybe I could look at the video and maybe understand a little better. Um, but that's that. So, end of turn. The Azerbaijanans are feeling a lot luckier now. Um, I mean, 8 to me. 4 fatigue. 5. 4. 3. 8. These ones. 5. 3. Five, five. So, the question is, do they hold out? And I think they will. So, for Armenians, again, what do they do? Well, I think he's going to actually move into there. And he's going to move over here. And I think I'm going to move. So this is the question, strategically, well, maybe tactically. How many more assaults can I make? And what can I honestly expect to achieve? I've really got to remove these and eliminate some of them. So what are the actual odds for? So that's 10, 12, 14. I've got about 14 units in there. I think I'm going to attack this. Before I do that, I think because I'm so heavily fatigued, I'm going to attack that stack. Defender retreat. That is what the Armenians needed. Now that's moved them out of the city blocks. Now ironically that doesn't make a lot of difference because this is all mountain. They're still times three, but they're not in the city. They're not they're no longer dug in in the city. Um obviously the centre is still open, but if they move out into there, they come out there, they come out being dug in, so that's not so bad. Um this unit I don't know, I'm gonna, they're gonna stay where they are, so that's that turn. That was a successful turn for the Armenians. I mean, they just needed to get some sort of retreat actions going on there. Now, this is where it sort of comes back round. He can actually move into there. It's worth it because they're 1.5 in here, but they're, they're, three, they're twice in you know, They actually get times three in there. But, see, this is what I was doing before. Now, all of a sudden, they're back in there. Because if you move in a big stack like that, you, you you leave all the spaces empty. And I think I'm just going to go for it. I don't know what the odds are. I don't think they're going to be that great. Should I? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's going to be three. It's going to be six. It's going to be one to one. Let's go for it. Four to one odds. That was pretty good. I mean, that was the thing that Azure Benin should have done because they're not as fatigued as that unit. I and mean, that unit is seven fatigue. So that would have been, I mean, at four to one, they deserved to win that. But they didn't. Um, so, in that turn, now the Armenians' turn. I mean, really, what do they want to do? They've got to start ousting. Some people, I want to move him there, him there, all the units into there. Hmm. 
four to one exchange. I mean that that was that was almost as unfortunate as the as Ivano turn away with the game. I mean the fatigues must be phenomenal. Six. Okay. Azerbaijan. I mean, I think. That's a fatigue one. That's a fatigue seven. That's a fatigue seven, so only thirty per cent. Time. Can they afford to be fighting back? I think they're going to spend a turn not fighting back and see what the Armenians do. And of course, the Armenian is me, so it's a bit hard for me to outthink myself. But now I'm sort of thinking, hmm, I'm the Armenian player. I mean, I think I'm going to. Split my forces up a bit and then go for this. I think this is the only sensible move. And at worst, that will leave me in the centre of the town in one big stack. Two to one odds and exchange. This is so not flowing quite as you might expect. I mean, the, the fatigues are now getting enormous. And this is like a couple of days heavy fighting, and both sides are pretty much knackered. Um, in turn. So, what do they do? Do they feel like they're at least trying? Two minutes left. Why not? They can't actually be too bad off in that dense urban hex, so let's see what these odds offer. If I can eliminate a unit, no units have been eliminated yet. I mean, it's not impossible to eliminate a unit. Exchange, two to one, an exchange. I promise I won't do a short video. I mean, there will be an hour on this one game. What I'm trying to maybe you know, convey is that you can have a lot of fun. With just such a, with a really simple setup, and I think I, I, I think it does qualify as being a little more highbrow than Minesweeper. It might seem as pure as Minesweeper, but really these units are dem are, are you know eight eighty percent down. They're, they're bearing the brunt of you know days of street heavy street to street fighting in this tiny little Armenian. Town, and this is quite a famous battle. Um, if you look it up on Wikipedia, you know, I mean, this, I mean, I don't think they did as much dancing around as, the, as these little counters are doing, but you, you know, it was heavy fighting. You've got to remember the thing with these, these are small units, they are they're all companies. Um, if you look at some of the other games, I'm not going to go on any further um, just because I want to bring some sort of balance to it all. Mm. I might as well just let's see what one final push can do. Less than thirty seconds to go. Can the Armenians do it in the last thirty seconds? This is it. What do you think? <sighs> <laughs> that should have been a foregone conclusion. Uh, it's not impossible to get other results other than exchanges, and that's how it that's how it looks now. I'm not going to do another video. That's that. Enjoy.
part four, war blog. Green counters the Azerbaijanis versus the Armenians. I can't believe this got into four videos. This is basically meant an hour of gameplay. I apologise if you've been watching this, but uh, I feel that I can't not get to the end of this game now um, on YouTube because you're going to be thinking who won, what happened. It's got to come to a conclusion. Um, but how? Um, I'm really not going to do a great deal of thinking. 7, 11, 8. Yeah, I think this stack is fatigued enough. And I have all the Armenians around it. I think. Oh, look. Yes, yes, but it's the end of their turn. So it's the end. It's turn. Is it turn 14 now? It's still turn 13. There's still a lot of turns. So the Azerbaijanis are going to think, well, the Armenians are going to do this complete attack. Do we sit there? Or do we maybe try and break through into there? Now they're pretty fatigued, so I'm going to go for that, and if I leave this empty I can reinforce it from there, so let's see. He's pretty fatigued, so are my units. I'm going to go with all of them, because I can't remember how many fatigued, and 5 to 1, ah, exchange. That is very strange. I'm beginning to wonder whether or not perhaps there isn't there are no other rules other than exchange. I mean you can get yeah, there, sh there should be other results coming up. It's beginning to get a bit suspicious. Hmm. Four. Five. Let's see. They've been really unlucky. Both sides have been really unlucky with the die roll. It is getting suspicious. Ouch. Attack and retreat. Yes. It's beginning to get really fatiguing. And the fatigue factors are beginning to show. Um, because the units are basically not worth anything. Um, sooner or later, someone is going to get some defender eliminated, even some attacker eliminated sort of results. Okay, so that attack, in theory, should have gone into there. They could have won that. I think they were four to one. They got an exchange. That is bad luck. Um, you know, I tried to avoid being encircled. It was the other way around before, and now these the Armenians are going to the full encirclement, uh, full full. Armenian turn. What am I actually going to do? To be responding. Okay, so now I've moved into there. Now it's the other way around. It's come full circle. And if I get an exchange on this, I'm going to. Sulk. An exchange. That is almost unbelievable. That is unbelievable. So, the Armenians, they want to attack into there, I think, with everything. Oh, look at that. A defender retreat at 7 to 1. They actually won something. Forcing some of the Armenians out of the town. What are their factors now? 7, 11, 9, 6, 5, 13, 10, 6. Some of these aren't so bad. Okay, so end of turn. Okay, I think.
think the Armenians are going to have to try and go for it. I mean, what are they throwing stones at each other now? It's just a flesh wound. One to one, an exchange. I'm going to have to look at these, these results because um, I'm pretty sure it wasn't happening before. Okay, okay, so. Do they really want to do an assault? I mean, that is a big stack. This one here. Yes, because if we can get into there, we are tripled. This is why they're going to do this assault. Because they will be tripled. Mass X. One to one, an exchange. I'm getting tired of the exchanges, but I'm not so fussed with them. The Armenians go again. There has to be a result to this game. Something has got to crack. Ah, attack a retreat. Back to game. The Armenians <laughs> really look as so though they're not doing very well. Holy flip flops. Now, do we move into there? I think so. And then attack into there. At least I will be, at the end of the day, no matter what. Come on. One to one exchange, let me. Hmm. Now that's not good. Because now, the Armenians can just get straight back in. Um, attack. Attacker retreats. Hmm. But they were, I mean, the odds are one to one, but the fatigue factors are now immense. So, let's just see if I can get some results. I think we're going to push everything into there. Same attack as last time, but there's now only one unit in there, and I think he's fatigued, so are all my units. But let's see. Oh, look at that! There is cause for jubilation. The Azerbaijanans have caused a defender eliminated. What, what could that possibly be? It's not an exchange. The first unit of the game after one hour of play has been lost. And it has been lost by the Armenians. Does this mean the Armenians are now going to retreat? Because it's looking pretty grim. The Azerbaijanis have put up, after four or five days of heavy, intense fighting, a, a sterling defense of their hometown of Susha. Um, I didn't keep it historically, but I'm sure they'd be rooting with joy to find out that they're doing so well in this scenario. Okay, but I think the Armenians are pretty determined that they want to move back into here. Some strange reason <laughs> why they are gluttons for punishment. Now this, that stack, they're not going to attack. It's just so tight. If they don't attack, this stack will attack them.
Yeah, none of these units can move, so this is going into a zone of control. Okay. Now I think this is a tactical move. The Azerbaijanans are going to move everything into here and attack that unit. And they pull off another Defender Eliminated. Defender retreats, well that's not too bad. An exchange. And turn. Eliminated, come on. Defender eliminated. Come on, you Azerbaijanis. <laughs> oh, such simple pleasures. Do they attack? There's not much else that they can do. I mean, if they split their forces up to take Susha, they will be mince pies by the assaulting Azerbaijani. There's got to be an all or nothing here. And if they lose this, I mean in the sense of, well, defender attack of exchange. Okay, okay, let's see if we can get some sort of conclusion on this. Now the Azerbaijanans are now going to do the final grand assault. Which, ironically, coming from mountain into medium urban, is actually the better way around to do it. Attack of retreats. Not good. And I think the um, I think the um, I think this is the way to do this. The Armenians are going to stack up in here because there's no way that the Azerbaijanans, unfortunately, can get around back into Susha. They are stuffed. Now, are there enough movement points left to move into there? Mm -hmm, but not average to have an attack, so I'm not going to do that. In turn, do they do it? I think they're going to be. I think they're going to push for the Armenians to attack them in a mountain hex. And why would they want to do that? Uh, because they're completely fatigued. Possibly. Let's see. They've got. Bigger units. Let's assume both sides are all fatigued. Attack. Attack of retreats. This is just surreal. <laughs> and now the Azerbaijanis are going to retake Susha. I mean, why not? And that has got to be the end of it. I can't carry on doing this. I think what I'm trying to demonstrate here is that a little game can be fun. And the, the units are resilient. They can be, they're obviously they're eliminated. They usually eliminate a hell of a lot quicker than this. Um, and, and a small scenario like this can be quite dynamic. So there you go. Wow, war blog. Part five of the never ending battle for Susha. It's an interesting game. The Azerbaijans 
still make, still hold Susha. The Armenians uh, have actually are the only side to have lost any units. Um, you can see the original list here. Now they've lost two units. Now which units did they lo lose? Now they've still got both their armor units. Um, so they've basically probably lost two two factor units, um, which changes the odds quite slightly. And if you consider that they're all as fatigued as each other, you sort of think, well, do they stand a chance? Well, I think they still do, um, but the, these people are certainly not going to be pushing for it. Now I think, how many movements do they have? I'm determined to get some kind of conclusion out of this. Hopefully, I can do it quickly. I mean, 12 fatigue. I don't want to go for the outflank with it because it would just mean that the uh, Azerbaijan's. That. I've got so I can reload that because I didn't move them all. In turn, now the question is do the Azerbaijanans go for an attack there? I mean, because they're tripled in the mountains, but I think, to be quite honest, that they pretty much have to. I mean, this is. really extreme. I get a feeling this isn't the best thing that they could do, but one to three, so that was getting it's getting pretty bad. And that was a retreat. And they're not even fighting in Susha anymore, they're fighting in the mountains. Um What the Armenians are going to do on this occasion is attempt at least to get a little bit more of an odds by outflanking. Let's see. An exchange. Now that's not good because now, as a Vijanans, saying thanks for splitting your forces up like that we're now going to take this hex out and hopefully advance both into Susha and destroy an exchange the Armenians are saying well thanks a lot you know that, that was pretty good because now we can move into here and turn first turn 24 the Armenians are saying that was good because you failed to take that, that out. Uh, we're now going to split our numbers up a little more. Giving us a couple of nice stacks. Giving us now a 20% surround advantage. Attack. And exchange. I think at one to one you shouldn't really necessarily expect much else, but I think you should at the same time. I think they're gonna take this try and take this hex out here. Let's see what happens. If the Azerbaijanans can eliminate this unit. Defender eliminated. I think that's turning the tide. That has got to be turning the tide. Um, that was, uh, was only a two. Let's see. I think the Armenians are now starting to get desperate. Lost three units. I mean, this is about as good as it's going to get. They're fighting into heavy urban. 
the attacker retreats. Can the Armenians now follow up? I don't think this is going to be a very good attack, but everyone is so knackered. One to two, an exchange. The exchanges are pretty much like no results now. So the Armenians are now thinking, thanks a lot. It gives us another chance at this move here, which is something we did exactly a few moments ago. going to see whether we can get something that's not an exchange. Attack of retreat! <laughs> I played this before a while ago, um, not this game. This never ending series of, of battles. And I think to some extent I should put a limit on the amount of fatigues these units can get. I mean this unit has 12 fatigues, this one has 15. I think it may be at, you know, at something at this level they should be just sort of routing or you know, just completely failing. Because the thing is, it's, the fact is, they're both as fatigued as each other and that sort of cancels them out. Um, so, end turn. I think the Azerbaijanans are going to. Split their forces up. Let's just reload. I'm putting more movement for this unit. No. I'm going to split them up here just to defend them a little more and attack into here. I should have balanced it out a little more. And this gives them plus 10% which could make a difference in this sort of situation. Attack and retreat, now that wasn't good. Not at all. Now the Armenians are thinking, I think the Armenians really want to be, I mean, look at that, the Armenians have taken Swisher back. Holy flip flops, this is like insane. And the commander said, attack, <laughs> don't stop. An exchange. Aren't they exchanging Christmas cards? <laughs> oh my goodness, certainly not fighting. And the Azerbaijanans are going to really, you know, they're going to make this assault into this little stack of units, which is almost perfectly balanced with the other stack. Attack and retreats. Okay. So now the Armenians hold so <laughs> Unreal. Unreal. The Armenians hold Susha. And they are going to attack into this little stack. Which is heavily fatigued, of course. Attack. An exchange. Okay. I think the Armenian, uh, the Azerbaijanans are going to spend this turn not attacking for a change. Uh, I don't have fatigue recovery. And. I think that the Armenians are going to take this opportunity. Ouch! I didn't do that. Oh! The Terrors of War, did you see that? I accidentally ended the turn. I was going to get a massive enfilade on them. And now the Armenians 
are going to attack this single little hex. I mean, can that be? Can that truly be accepted? Of course it can. Defender eliminated. Oh dear. Now the Armenians are saying, no, that was a foul. <laughs> no fair. <laughs> you cheated. We didn't mean to do that. <laughs> That's just the way it is in love and war. <laughs> All is fair. Oh dear. The Armenians are just not happy with that. I think they're going to approach the United Nations about that one. Um, okay. Are they going to attack? Not the sulking, and they've gone dug in. Now the Azerbaijanans. are going to try and split their force. Now they're dug in, in heavy urban. Attacker retreats. That's not so bad. The Armenians are going to go for it. It's half a stack. An exchange. Armenians are going to go for this stack here. Calling out revenge. The attack of retreats further into Susha. The Armenians. One over here. Give me an extra ten percent. One minute to go. Attacker eliminated. And I think. That is a suitable ending for the cheating Azerbaijanans. <laughs> and now the Armenians saw from their cheated comrades' death will now engage in a final victory lap as they plummet down the hills of Susha into the disgraceful sides of the Azerbaijanans and chase them out of town. And the Azerbaijanans are going to run away, and that's it. I think that um, that was an epic game that they will not forget in a hurry. <laughs>